Well, hello and welcome. Good morning. This is Sunday morning mass. Not mass in the same sense as you might imagine. <laughs> We're not really in a church. We're in Ronnie's garage. Yes. Yeah. Uh, studio. Please. All right. <laughs> doesn't smell like a studio. No, it doesn't. It smells a little bit like cars. Yeah, and garage. Yeah. Uh, please rise. No, I'm just kidding. Some of you arose. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and uh, please be seated. Uh, may peace be with you and also with you. And thank you. And thank you. All right. Uh, glad you're here this morning. Get yourself a cup of coffee and get ready. We've got a great show lined up for you. First off and uh, foremost, I would like to mention that many of you have been following our exploits uh, in trying to get Mr. Forrest Fenn to come on our show. We'll get into that in just a moment. But I wanted to say that we are in the process of funding that trip uh, through our viewers. And we have a PayPal account now, and you see it on the screen there. It is paypal.me slash men are so smart. That is really easy to remember. And we're having quite a few donations rolling in. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, we'd love to have you. We sure would appreciate it. Uh, you can go there and donate 20 or 50 or $100, whatever. Our goal is twofold. Ronnie, we want, number one, to be able to sk skedaddle down to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and spend some time with our friend, Mr. Forrest Finn. Right. And at the same time, we would like to accumulate enough dough so that we can buy the software and such for being able to go live. Right. Which has ultimately all along been our goal for Sunday morning mass. Uh, we'd like to be able to come to you live every Saturday morning and take your questions as we are on the air. Now, uh, if I could speak to that, Ronnie, we watch this show uh, as it plays on Sunday mornings. Right. Um, it comes on at 7 o'clock on Sunday. I had it at 6 o'clock, but I just couldn't get up in time. Yeah, that's that's early for a, for a Sunday morning. It's my only day to sleep in, kind of. Yeah. So... Um, we're with you watching the show from 7 o'clock and uh, taking your comments live. Uh, don't be surprised when you comment on our video today. You will probably get almost an immediate response. Um, and we'll be with you probably for the next three hours till 10 a.m. on Sunday uh, the uh, 30th. Okay, so having said that, uh, let's get to the book, The Thrill of the Chase. Ronnie, where are you at? I'm about two thirds of the way done. Okay. Uh, I think one of the last chapters chapters I read was uh, Cody the Buffalo. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's uh, and you know what? And I have to say, in reading it, some of the stories are I don't know. They just seem like they're eh, like the ramblings of a crazy person, perhaps misplaced. But I think that maybe they might be additional clues. In those stories, he talks a lot about, uh, is it Hebgen Lake? Yep. Um, you know, I I just, I don't know. It's hard to say. There's so much that it could be, or it could just be some, you know, random thought that popped <clears throat> into his head while he's writing his memoirs down, and that is going to be the next chapter in the book. Well, I can tell you, I think... Um, was it 18 and 19? Um, oh, not too far. Um, on page 20, No Place for Biddies. You remember a while back, uh, I brought a partial solution um, to the table, and the solve involved some uh, biddies, old biddies. Do you remember that we talked about that? Yeah. And um, I believe, as I said just a moment ago, you talk about a misplaced chapter. Why is it there exactly? Well, it, I feel as if it has no glue to the story, if it isn't germane, then yeah, Ronnie. It's a clue. I think it is. Uh, one of the things that they talk about is the burial area for his mom and dad. You'll you'll get to that. I'm not there yet. And um, he gives an exact location. 
and says in the book that he found out later and didn't know that. Really? Hmm. The comments that I see on that are, do you think he would really not know where his parents, and, and why would he mention the numbers, I think, four and 26, I'm sorry, I, we're live, I can't remember that. Right. Someone also re recommended that we get uh, um, one of those, what do you call those things that you can talk to, ask uh, Alexis? Oh, 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 yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah. Ask Alexis, I, I, Alexa, sorry. <laughs> we should have one of those for moments, senior moments that we have like this where we yeah. can remember something. What is it that we need to ask? Yeah, exactly. Where is Forest Fence Treasure? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Uh, all right, so anyway, in any case, I thought uh, one of the sweetest, oh, and my conversation with Forrest, I'll get to that. One of the sweetest parts of this book, uh, Forrest is a man who loves his wife and the journey that they've been on. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think he's very appreciative of that. And he wrote a chapter in the book called Ode to Peggy Jean. And this chapter really touched me, Ronnie, for obvious reasons. He starts and says, Cancer is a terrible word. No pleasant thoughts are conjured up when it's spoken and pulse rates quicken for no reason other than to hear it said. The disease it defines represents nature in its most repellent form. Beautifully written. At age 58, I think I was 55, invasive cells came into my body and took a kidney. That was bad enough, but the mental diagnosis I gave myself was worse, and that is so difficult when you're going through it, what's in your head. I waited too long. My inferior, di uh, my inferior vena cava was embedded with a hateful chewing malignancy. My surgeon, Dr. Taylor Floyd, did more than could be demanded from any earthly being. His genius gave me hope, however, faint. My life was on a hold, as chemotherapy and radiation treatments took additional tolls on my spirit and my body. And might I just say, you feel like it's adding years. Um, just Then out of nowhere came a family charge led by my wife, who refused to accept any abstract judgments that ran contrary to my total recovery. She wouldn't hear of it. She didn't want to hear about the possibility of him dying. No saint could match her faith. She and my daughters, Kelly and Zoe, provided warm comfort, encouraged me to fight the despair that so dampened my slowly passing hours. Through the many bedridden weeks that were with me and by me and for me, they were. They nursed me, my weakened confidence all along the mucky trail that I thought was disappearing into the black abyss of medical odds. You just feel like you're caught up in the numbers. Peggy sensed so completely the vital consequence of my struggle that I believe she frightened away any remnants of the disease. <laughs> they must have fled in dreadful horror in the face of her focused passion and unshakable determination. My team had saved my life. So he wrote her a poem, if you will. Today I looked up in the sky and saw a sparrow on the fly. What ancient secrets does he know? Why am I here and cannot go? Today I looked up in the sky and saw a raven flying by. He seemed so focused on his way. So tell me now why I must stay. Today I looked up in the sky and saw my shadow floating by. It seemed so strange I wondered why, and now it's gone, but where am I? Today I looked up in the sky and saw that I shall never die. Forget the pain and harm you see. My loving wife looks after me. I recovered after having planned my future up to one detail short of the final beer. I had even plotted to have my bones rest forever in silent repose besides the treasure chest. If I had to go, I wanted to do it on my own terms as my father had done two years earlier with no hospital bed to offer a temporary postponement. It was important to me that I dared to be myself. Today, I live my life with renewed meaning but always with the awareness that some insidious strain might again sneak into my body. I hope my age has pushed me far enough ahead so as to discourage even a most persistent chase. Um, wow. Uh, 
I can't even imagine what cancer would be like going through if you didn't have anybody. And well, I mean, any terminal disease, really, but sure, cancer is the one that you know is most often uh, thought of when you talk about somebody that's bedridden and there's, there's no hope. Exactly, there, um, there's no hope. It seems. I mean, we just—I lost uh, unbelievably. My one of my best buddies' wives just passed away from cancer, uh, April twenty-third, and just this last week. My wife lost her uncle, not to cancer, but he had just lost his wife a year ago, and he seemed pretty healthy. Uh, his buddies, he was going to go out golfing. Uh, he didn't make it to the golf course. His buddies called him. He didn't answer. They called his daughters. Uh, his daughters called the police. His poli the police went there and forced their way in, and he was just in bed. Just died you know in his sleep had a heart attack or aneurysm or who knows what but um you know and, and i think that and he and his wife were unbelievably close so you know it's it's just hard and i i can't even imagine going on without your significant other so but again that's a completely different kind of death when you're planning on going golfing in the morning as opposed to you're planning on maybe living another week. Yeah. What uh, must that feel like, Ronnie, when your doctor actually tells you you, you have about a week to live? Yeah. Um, I mean, that was pretty much the case with my buddy's wife. She was in the hospital. I went and visited her. Uh, they were kind of making preparations for hospice care. Which is not a good sign. No. I mean, that shows you that... You know, you're, it's all downhill from here. Uh, and, I mean, past that, she made it like another three or four days. And I think it's, you know, the human spirit can really only take so much. And then at that point, when your mind gives up, your body is going to be short to follow. Yeah. It's so sad. And you would think with all of the technological advances we've had in the world, that there would be a cure for at least some of the cancers. Right. Uh, and the process of chemotherapy and and all of that... Radiation uh, is terrible. ...takes and, such a toll yeah. on, on a body that's already ravished by uh, a, a disease. Yep. You know, the side effects are equally as bad. Yep. Um, you would think we'd be further than that. And then the question arises... Do the big pharma companies really want to cure for cancer? And I don't want to go down that road on this episode. Maybe yeah. we'll save that. Yeah. But it's something to think about. Okay, so uh, we're glad that you're here for Sunday morning mass. I had some communications with Forrest this last week, Ronnie, that I've been sharing with you. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to tell you that I, I find him to be such an incredibly fascinating man. And his words with me... We're so gentle. Um, I I asked him to come on the show, and um, he considered it. And to the point where I'm trying to, as I'm talking, I'm trying to find Forrest's... I'll tell you, it was a room. real reading them, because you were forwarding them to me shortly afterwards. It was a bit of a roller coaster ride. <laughs> yeah, it was, huh? It was up, and then down, and then up, and then, woo, big down. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, and I get, I'll let you read the emails, but I, I totally understand what he's saying about how in one of them, he said he doesn't trust himself. Right. That's right here. He says, Lou, tell me what the plan would be. I can talk about my books and my life experiences, but I don't want to go in depth about the treasure. He says, I am 88 years old. And I don't trust myself right. talking about it. So if you're wondering why you're not seeing a lot of Forrest Finn in the media, that's exactly why. Right. He would not want to blurt out a, a clue and end this completely interesting and right. legacy full adventure. You don't, you don't want to make it too easy for somebody that has never been boots on the ground to all of a sudden go, oh, 
wow, that's a huge Easter egg. I think I know where it is. Well, you have people that have invested years of right. their life right, right. to this. Yeah. So uh, it wouldn't be fair. And we've already made it abundantly clear we don't we don't want to talk about the treasure hunt. Uh -huh, that's not why we would go. It's that's off the table. Right. We're not going to talk about that. And so I I don't think he would blurt anything out. I mean, I don't I don't know him, but he seems like he's still very sharp. Um I think if we steer way clear of any talk of the treasure uh that you know, there's very little to no chance that he would inadvertently blurt out an Easter egg like that. Well, I'll share some of these. Um, some of this information he's asked me to keep confidential, so I'll have to be very careful of that and respect, out of respect for him. We sent him a link of last Sunday's Mass. Uh, we were told that Mr. Finn likes to watch the show if somebody sends him a link. And so I thought, well, this was a really good show, Tea with Olga. Uh, let's send him this link. Well, here's what he had to say. Good show, guys. I tried to subscribe, but Google kept asking me questions and wouldn't accept my answers. How come they know more about my password than I do? <laughs> they are probably overeducated. Glad you liked my tea with Olga story. Her father, Joseph Svoboda, was an important artist. I bought one of his paintings from Olga. It hangs in my dining area. Now, about her tiny bathroom. We turned her little bathtub area into a shower, but it's still small. I thought that little space was depraved, so I gold-plated the fixtures in her sink. That's, <laughs> it was kind of a salute. Up. Yeah. A salute to Olga. And then he yeah. says, you guys do good work, and signs with his traditional lowercase letter F. Um, you know, Ronnie... Um, he writes back and he tells me, Lou, I, I just can't do it. And I wish I could share with you the reason that he cited, but I promised that I would keep that confidential. But might I just say, I expect that you, in as much as I and Ronnie have accepted the fact that it just wouldn't happen. It, there is not going to be a Forrest Fenn interview on Men Are So Smart. Now, here's what he did say, Ronnie. He did say he would be glad to answer any email questions that we had. Right. Okay, so that's still in the works. Uh, my wife, Teresa, said to me, well, maybe he could record it in audio form. I think that's, I think that's pushing it a little too much, honey. Um, I don't think he wants to do that. And I'm not going to force him. Uh, that's one of the things that I've um, really experienced in this, Ronnie, is a respect for him. You know what? I, I mean, it it totally humanizes him. Right. Uh, before, it would be like talking about Tom Brady, and then all of a sudden, you're having email conversations with Tom Brady. Uh, I mean, wow, what a what a difference that is. And then there's the you know, the possibility that beyond email, you could, you know, Tom Brady says, hey, come out to New England and I'll, you know, you can sit through a practice or something. Right. So, I mean, it is, it, it totally makes it real. Uh, you know, just having the guy's book, I don't know how many Stephen King books I've, I've read, a dozen more maybe, but, it, you know, he doesn't seem real to me. Seems like I've seen him on TV. Right. Uh, I think he was on Dancing with the Stars. And oh my. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, he you see him on TV from time to time. Uh, but I mean, I see a lot of people on TV from time to time. Doesn't make them real. But when you start having conversations with them, yeah, they're real. And so Mr. Fan ultimately said, I, I I just I wouldn't be able to do that, Lou. And so I wrote back. And here it is. I respect and appreciate your decision, Mr. Fenn, and I will live with it. May I, though, just add one more comment. Unlike other shows, the only motivation Ronnie and I had was to meet with you and get to know you as a person. We don't give a crap about finding your treasure. Ronnie and I were only hoping to meet another new friend. So, we will wish you a beautiful life 
Here's hoping every day of the rest of your life is filled with happiness and love uh, and the love of those you hold close. If there's anything we could ever do to make you smile, please don't hesitate to call on us. Thank you so much for your consideration, sir. Respectfully, Lou and Ronnie. And I think maybe we'll end this episode with this on Sunday Morning Mass, Ronnie. Here was his reply. And I have to tell you, with all the hoops that you and I have jumped through, uh, the messaging, the research, everything else we've gotten to know about Force Fen, this makes it all worthwhile to me. And these are Mr. Fen's words. He says, you guys are always welcome in my home. Oh, Pretty cool. Yeah. From the man who gave us this. That's Ronnie's bookmark, so. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's Costco ad. Yeah. <laughs> the man that gave us this book. The man that um, enlightened me to a huge degree after reading this. And as Ronnie said, he's about two-thirds of the way uh, through the book. I'm sure he'll finish it this weekend. Well, um, maybe not. <laughs> it's my it's my anniversary oh. this week. We're going to be out of town. Okay. All right. Well, you know, when you're maybe, si I'll sitting take it at with the me. pool. I'll take it with me. Yeah. We'll see. Don't let it get in the way, Ron. Right. Okay. Uh, what anniversary is it, by the way? It's be my 34th wedding anniversary. Holy. To the same woman? Yes. Oh, okay. And it's my, let's see, my in-laws have 27 years on top of us. So what's 30? 61. 61 years for them. And my daughter's first wedding anniversary. We wow. all got married on the same day, June 29th. So, uh... Okay, well, Ronnie, I know that uh, you had planned to take the weekend off, but I, I'm sorry, we, you can't do that. Yeah. You're just going to have to cancel those plans. Yeah, your, the anniversaries your definition the, of the, taking the weekend off and mine are wildly different. <laughs> <laughs> wildly different. I think you're right. I think you might be right. All right, well, thank you very much for joining us this morning for Sunday Morning Mass. Uh, as I mentioned at the open, uh, we are watching the show with you uh, from the comfort of our own homes individually. Or a hotel. Or a hotel, right. And uh, we are responding to your comments or, and or questions. Uh, if you'd like to still donate to our fund, uh, that is possible. There's our PayPal address. It is, I believe, paypal.me slash men are so smart. Okay. And at this point now, it's not so much a funding a Santa Fe trip as it is a funding the live, go live equipment. Yeah, we definitely want to be able to do that with yeah. you. Which is not terribly expensive, but it's it's just slightly, I mean, since this show makes zero money. Right. Uh, and we both have bills to pay right. other than that. And we both do work. Yeah, so we'll get to that comment in, in an upcoming episode, Ronnie. <laughs> Uh, that was yeah. That one felt good when I read that one. Yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna reply in a second. Okay. All right. So that'll do it for us. We hope that you have a wonderful Sunday after attending mass. You can tell everyone you sat in the front row. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. You and, witness mass. Mm -hmm. And you witness greatness. Well, that's obvious. <laughs> well, you did witness Forrest Fens communicate with us. And yes. That's pretty. Fabulous. That was pretty great. Yeah. All right. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Uh, please go in peace, and we'll and see. Arrive you. not in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Ronnie. Yeah, uh, we'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart.